Hey there, Amplifiers. Thanks for tuning in today. And you know, one of the cool things we get to do is hear from other business advisors on what they do to provide value to those they serve and how those little actions through time can lead to a big impact. And our guest today is none other than a, an expert when it comes to really understanding the value of niching and also providing massive value to those she serves. Uh, so we're going to be uncovering this. And if you're tuning in now, I want to make sure that you um, ask any questions that you have or put in any comments. We'd like to see that in the chat. Even if you're catching this on the replay, we will be uh, circling back to the comments. Also, um, be sure to follow Growth Amplifiers. You can go to growthamplifiers.com slash connect, see all the different channels that we're on, whether it's um, iTunes, YouTube. Tune into the to the channel that best fits your preferences, and let's go ahead and introduce our, our guest today. Um, so Tanya Schulte is with the Profit Constructors, and she helps construction firms maximize their time in their field by reducing their time working on the books. Uh, who likes working on the books when that's not your expertise? It's not the best value of your time if that's not your craft. Um, she also provides full service bookkeeping and full uh, bookkeeping consultants consultancy and has over 20 years experience in the construction and general contracting accounting concepts. So she's an expert and really understands the importance of niche. So welcome to Growth Amplifiers, Tanya Shelty. Thanks, Kenny. Thank you so much for having me. Thanks for being here and sharing your expertise. Um, you've you have a couple decades in this expertise. You've learned some things along your journey. And if we would, just kind of start off with a, a self-introduction and, and how you got started with your business. That would be a great kind of introduction. Thank you. Yeah, so like you say, I have 20 years of experience in the industry, mm -hmm. um, but prior to um, six years ago, when we decided to start the profit constructors, I was working mostly in the corporate construction accounting world. So mm -hmm. um, learning all the ins and outs of how a corporate accounting department functions and sort of how those tight controls that a larger corporation has to have over money flowing in and out makes a big difference. And so when I decided six years ago to start the profit constructors, um, the tagline that we use to this day was really important to us, which is helping smaller construction contractors run with the big dogs, oh. <laughs> um, which means, you know, helping them understand those larger corporation controls and how those play into growth. It's an important concept. And one of the things that we do in, in growth amplifiers we're advocates for, you know, is you're going to get the results that your systems are set up for. So, if you want to play with the big dogs, you got to have the right systems. <laughs> and rather than trying to reinvent the wheel, uh, it's best to work with a guide that has learned and knows the systems and can help you uh, identify those gaps, those blind spots, and help you expedite getting there. So much more efficient and effective, right? Oh, 100%. Yeah, I think that one of the things that we've seen as we step in and start working with clients is a lot of them are really good skilled tradesmen. Mm -hmm. And I would say this is the case, like you're talking about, like with growth amplifiers, you guys run into the same thing. Like you're working with people who are very, very good at their craft, mm -hmm. um, but they're not necessarily really good at the skill set that you're bringing to the table. And it's the same with us. So um, we can come in and say, hey, here's just some tried and true systems uh, instead of reinventing the wheel, why don't you just go ahead and run with these things that we know will work really, really well. And we'll, we'll be in the back end, just helping the process and helping those wheels move forward. And you guys can just run the business. And if you're tuning in and thinking about this, one thing that I always like to just highlight is it's those subtle differences that have a big impact. Uh, and so you can think, uh, you know, I pretty much know what needs to be done. And we have maybe someone internally that's doing doing the basic job. But think about this for your trade. Uh, think about 
maybe you've seen someone coming into your industry and they don't know what they don't know. And you're looking at what they're doing and they're kind of getting the job done, but you're like, Oh, you're just, you're totally missing those little things that make a big difference. It, it could be completely different end result. If you right. skip just the even marginal steps along the way, um, they all add up and completely can change the outcome. So if, if you're tuning in, uh, think about that for, for yourself and just how those little differences that someone else could point out can have a big impact. Yeah, I think that's very huge. And one of the things that I think plays into that mm -hmm. is you may be able to do those things with um, a minimum of system, meaning you can collect money, maybe get that money to the bank um, and continue moving the business forward. And you can, with that money, pay the vendors. Um, and that can keep a small business rolling very easy if you just, you know, that you're, you're collecting money, getting it to the bank and paying the vendors. Mm -hmm. But if you need to perhaps make a, um, you know, if, if you need to bring on another person and fill that role, <laughs> so right. you're making an internal change. If they don't understand how you are collecting the money, getting it to the bank and paying the vendors, they're not going to be able to continue to fill that role. So you have to have something in place that explains to them, here's our system for collecting the money, getting the money to the bank and paying the vendors. It can right. be that simple, but there just has to be a system behind it that's translatable to anybody else that you're going to need to fill into that role. You know, I'm going to take it back maybe to, I don't know the full ins and outs of construction. My wife, she works for a um, organization for pile drivers. Hmm. And, and so not the wrestling type, <laughs> not the wrestling type, but the construction type, you know, the yes. pile driving to the ground. Yes. So she maybe has more insight to that, but I'm just thinking like, even for home improvement, right? Painting, you'd think painting is pretty damn basic. Uh, wall, paint, paintbrush, or roller, put it on wall. But um, it's not just that easy. No. Um, my father-in-law, he's a, he's a real good tradesman and he knows how to properly prime the walls, properly mask everything. So it, it comes laser tight and it's amazing the difference, which I think like I thought I did a good job painting until I saw it. what he was able to do is those little differences. He knows even how to filter the paint, um, so that it, it comes and makes better use of the paint. I, I don't even know how to explain it. Yeah, but the, it's just something that you wouldn't know unless you're you've have twenty years experience working in that craft, right? Oh, um, absolutely. One of the things that I was thinking about as you were talking about that is when you are a painter just starting out and you begin to go paint the walls, and it's just you, and so you sign a few contracts, and you know that you can go out and you can complete so much work and so much time, mm -hmm. and you generally have an idea of what's going to cost you. And you're making money doing that. That works really well when it's just you painting. But mm -hmm. the minute that you want to hire someone else to do that, you suddenly are going to incur costs for hiring that person. And you have to now take that into account when you're signing new contracts. And so many small tradespeople don't take those labor costs into account when they first start hiring new people. And so suddenly where maybe you were making a good profit and a large margin, if you're not taking those costs into account, and doing the math right and thinking it all the way through, maybe suddenly you're losing money on every painting contract and you can't understand why. Um, and so those are the little subtle things that you don't necessarily think about. And even if you think, okay, well, I, I am accounting for the fact that I'm paying the guy $35 an hour to do that. Are you accounting for the fact that you're also having to pay taxes and insurance for having him on board? Are you accounting for the fact that maybe you have now provided a second vehicle for him and you're putting fuel in that vehicle? Maybe you've given him a mobile device. So all of the things that factor into him just walking through your door to do work are now suddenly costs to the business. And so just little by little, as you start adding complexity, sorry, to the business, um, that those are things that you then have to think through and that an outside advisor who already has years of experience seeing those things can help you understand. So we're going to, Reminds me of the movie uh, Encanto that my kids are watching right now. They're uh, 
like a little little scene where the the older sister keeps on taking the pressure and gets a drip 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 of yes. pressure and um that can be what it's like you know you you get in these little touch points adding pressure and could be a game changer to your bottom line so uh finding those ways to relieve that pressure is super important and and we're going to move into uh the big three and one of the things we're we're talking about we've been doubling down on this recently is the power of niching and just how valuable it is to a business but i'm curious to know you know what you mentioned earlier that you had the background with corporate construction but what what got you into the construction arena in the first place how, what was your story to get into that that background because there's a lot of different ways you could help different businesses but being really focused uh definitely makes a difference it does um I'll share just briefly my my story for how I got in construction in the beginning. I was in college taking accounting classes and a home builder and architect who was a friend of the family asked if I would just come help him with this new QuickBooks thing that he had. <laughs> uh, and I said, sure. And so I did that. And then that basically launched my career. But one of the things that I think is important to note is that construction is actually a huge niche. <laughs> So I think right. we determined fairly early on that even though we were saying we could work with construction companies, we still had to narrow that down because if we didn't, we would find ourselves trying to learn a brand new tech stack every time we brought on a client. We would find ourselves not being able to create those scalable, repeatable processes that we encourage others to do. So we said, how do we solve for that? And we decided to narrow it all the way down to we work with subcontractors and specialty tradesmen only. Folks who can work in um, certain kinds of tech that we know and understand intrinsically and we're better to able to advise on. Mm -hmm. um, and that not just the tech, but we have the this expertise and background in the specific needs of the subcontractor. That is huge. Huge. I can't even put it in the screen. It's so huge. And from whether it's because a lot of the times what we're focusing on is from a marketing and the experience that you have with the clients, they're really making a good impact. Mm -hmm. And if you want your marketing to dial in and get better results, you really want to identify who your customers are, what their challenges are, and the language they speak. Yes. Um, then you have those, if once you attract and have those customers, then Again, servicing their needs, better understanding their problems, and providing the best value to them. Uh, that's a good point you make because we've been talking a lot about niching, but it's really making sure that you, you're dialing in to get really focused because you yeah. you're getting really focused because not all industries or people in that industry uh, are at the same level, have the same challenges, speak the same language. Right. Um, so that's that's really awesome that you you had that all just from someone asking once upon a time, uh, hey, could you could you kind of come help out? <laughs> yeah, uh, and you know the interesting part is I always loved the kind of accounting work. That's something that even from when I was a child, I actually would purchase um, cash registers, like real cash registers, at yard sales. <laughs> And play on the cash register all day long when I was a kid. <laughs> so, yeah, I've always loved it. That's one of my favorite little toys I can remember being a little kid is uh, it's a little Fisher Price cash register. It's mm -hmm. got like big, big coins in it and put it in, press a little thing. It goes, you press charge and it goes down a little roll. roll. Oh, yeah. It was so much fun and you could, you could turn a little crank and the register pops open. Yes. I, yeah. I played with that probably way longer than the age expectations <laughs> were set for. Like, it's time to go to high school. Like, Hold on, I'll be right there. I'm just playing with my Fisher-Price calculator. It's Cash too cool, All right? <laughs> oh, that is that is a, a, a funny thing. And <clears throat> that's gonna bring us to number two, productizing. So check out your website. You've got a nice website, looks sharp. You got some great content going in on a website, very valuable content. And I noticed on home page, you can guide people to, hey, are you looking for some guidance and doing this more of yourself? Or are you looking to have a team kind of do it for you? 
and by niching, by really getting focused on who you serve, uh, as you mentioned a moment ago, you could productize your business in such a way where you create things once and you can leverage them many times. Right. Um, and so if we could just talk for a moment on how that benefits both you and your clients. Uh, sometimes people, when they start hearing me talking about productizing their business, they think of as a detractor. They think, oh, it's going to take away value. And I'm, I'm an advocate saying, hey, you're, you're looking at it and maybe in a different lens. To me, I think it's going to add value both ways. It's going to create a win-win. So I'd love to hear your perspective on that. I 100% agree with you on how it can add value. So obviously, from the standpoint of the provider of service, so for us and our team, um, I'm just going to be honest here, and my team will attest to this. I like shiny new toys. So I like all the new tech and all the new apps. Um, and Kenny, you and I've interacted at a conference where there were lots of new apps all, all around on the exhibitor floor, and mm -hmm. I wanted to tr go try out all of them, right? So um, so I enjoy that. But from a team standpoint, every time that we would, in the beginning, when I was not realizing that we needed to be more focused, every time we would bring on a new client, it was a struggle internally because my team had to learn, again, an entirely new set of um, text tech, excuse me, tech stack. They had to learn a new tech stack. They also had to learn entirely new systems and processes for each client. And that was very, very difficult internally. Um, and the more that we focused and found, oh, we could do this thing really well and we could learn these few softwares and know them inside and out. You, it just seems now then, now that I look back on it, it seems so natural and understandable that that adds so much more value for the client. Because the more that my team becomes familiar with a particular set of software, let's say uh, a particular project management software that most of our clients would be able to use. Mm -hmm. If we're only looking at that particular software from an accounting standpoint, we might be able to help them map it and do all the right accounting things. But the more that my team's in the software daily, weekly, monthly, uh, the more that they can help them with all the aspects of that software because they just become more and more familiar with it and becomes more and more intrinsic to what our team does. And so every time that my team learns something new about that one piece of software, that's added value for every one of our clients that's using that software. Hey there, this is Kenny from Growth Amplifiers, here to ensure you get your awesome ideas into action to grow and improve your business and achieve your full potential. Take the first step by visiting growthamplifiers.com and clicking the Start Here button. Take the assessment to get your personalized score. Then select from free resources to learn how to improve your score. Don't wait. Be proactive and take action now by visiting growthamplifiers.com and clicking the Start Here button. And always keep on amplifying. Now, let's get back to the show. So I've been sailing a, a very similar message and it's counterintuitive and there's a lot of other people uh, that that have the opposite approach. So I, I've been focusing on less can be more, you know, being really laser focused and really maximizing. So I call it like optimize and amplify. Mm. First optimize and say, how can we prune down, find the 80-20, where is that coming into play? Identify the 20% that's giving 80% of results then amplify and, and saying, let's, let's double down on this. Let's do more there. Um, but it's, it's too far too often. We get distracted by the day to day, the whirlwind, and we're just adding stuff because we're like, Oh, that would be good. Let's just add more and add more adding up costs, adding up time complexity. And it actually has the adverse effect. Uh, so if you're, if you're thinking about this for yourself, um, some of the things you may have heard to, do a lot more uh, is not necessary. It's just being more focused can actually be the better approach. We're going to dial into our third for this session. And this is how do you, Tanya, how do you sharpen the saw? Um, practice from the seven habits of highly effective people, continuing to sharpen the saw, continuing to uh, gain more knowledge and and prime yourself to to stay competitive. How do you do this for yourself? Uh, I love that you just added at the end there to stay competitive. 
our firm has what we call three core values. And one of them, and they're very small little snippets of what we say all the time to remind us of what the core value is. Mm -hmm. Sorry about that. I thought I had all my little chirps and dings turned off. Um, but the core value that it made me think of when you were saying that is we call it don't be Kodak. And the idea is always be thinking of where is the industry going? What's happening in the market? Be aware of those things. And don't assume that just because that industry has always used a particular technique or a particular set of softwares, that that's going to continue forever. So always be keeping yourself in the know. Um, and I tend to attend a lot of accounting conferences, as many as I can. So that's one way that I keep abreast of what are all the shiny new toys and the shiny new apps. I mean, is there something that's going to be better for our clients that would make sense for us to make a move and say, okay, all of our clients who are on this project management software, this one's actually going to be better for you and going to fit your needs better. So we, we are constantly looking into those things. Um, and then I also am always looking at, we're, we're members of quite a few different networking groups that are in the construction industry. So like the mm -hmm. American Subcontractors Association. So reading their information that they send out on a regular basis and seeing what's happening within that industry and what are trends and what things should we as advisors know about maybe even outside of accounting. That is a, a huge nugget. If you haven't done this yourself, I mean, for, I think it's a similar journey. Here you go, Tanya. Uh, so I, I was in the marketing world for close to two decades and we go to marketing conferences <laughs> And kept on going to marketing conferences and it's good you, you do want to stay tuned into the industry that you're yeah. you're part of but from a, a growth and development that you're just another sheep in the <laughs> in the flock there uh so by going into maybe the niche some events or different communities that your niche um gets together and connects then you can develop new relationships and really add a fresh perspective. And it changes the dynamics. You learn a lot more too of what people are dealing with, what their challenges are, what are ways that you can provide value to them on their journey. So uh, I, I can't believe we didn't see that a lot sooner, but we eventually did. And that's why we've been coming into the space where there's other business advisors that just have a different background of expertise. And so, it's like there's a whole bunch of guitar players and we're coming around playing a bass. They're like, oh, uh, we need a bass player. <laughs> so it, yeah. it becomes a different, a completely different skill that you're bringing in there. So that's awesome that you're doing that. And I really appreciate how you you have the continual growth mindset, knowing there's always a way to look for amplifying and optimizing. Yep. So we're going to jump into our, our lightning round. You ready? <laughs> She's like, you didn't tell me anything about lightning round. Uh, so this is just basically off the top of your mind, uh, getting your insights on some of the picks that you would find valuable. There's no right or wrong answers. The only thing I try to see if you could do is uh, maybe try to get something that might be a little less known versus the most obvious. Um, so for instance, we're going to talk about a productivity tool. So just think about a productivity tool that you like and recommend and whichever one that you'd like to give a shout out to. Sure. Oh, goodness. Which one to pick? Um, I will say right now my favorite is Scribe. So scribehow.com. Um, our team is always needing to create uh, very streamlined processes. And ScribeHow allows us to do that in a very effective and very easy way. So yeah, Scribe is probably my favorite right now. Sweet. I love that. Um Thank you very much. So now we're going to go to number two. So a book. What is a book mm -hmm. that you like um, that you might recommend? To riff off of something that we talked about earlier, and I actually mm -hmm. thought of this book while we were talking, uh, Michael McCallowitz's or Mike McCallowitz's um, Pumpkin Plan. He dives heavily into the whole idea that we talked about earlier about being super laser focused. And even talks about if you are trying to grow a very large pumpkin, you need to chop off all those little small pumpkins that are taking the nutrients away from your big pumpkin. It's very smart. Um, 
big fan of Mike McCallowitz. He has some great content. And that that book just showed up one time in my little um, audiobook reader. I'm like, mm -hmm. that seems interesting. I'll check it out. Didn't hear about it before that, but then I did. And I was like, that's a great book and such a great concept. Yes. Uh, so thank you. Uh, now we're looking for an event. You mentioned go to different events. There's a lot of different ones out there, a lot of cool ones. What's an event that you might share? I think it's worth promoting. Yeah, I actually was planning around this event earlier this morning. Um, so I'll be at Scaling New Heights. Again, I think that's where you and I met, Ken. Mm -hmm. um, it's probably my favorite accounting industry event uh, every year. Um, very good content there. And I was planning around it because our family is also going to take our Orlando family vacation while we're down there. So it should be a lot of fun. That should be a lot of fun. Um, I'm going to be in Orlando several times this year um, for speaking engagements, mm -hmm. including Scaling New Heights. And I just find it funny how I keep on ending up in Orlando. <laughs> yeah. I live in Jacksonville, so that's a small drive for me. Oh. I actually, so one of the reasons why we're, we've decided to make that our family trip is because I have family in uh, Gainesville and also some family that are down in Miami Beach. So they'll be coming up to hang out with us right before scaling. So we we're talking about the event, Scaling New Heights. It's a great event. All right. So an online show or channel. So whether, whether it's a podcast or a YouTube uh, channel or something that you find value in, tuning into, energizes you, think it's pretty cool. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Ron Baker and Ed Kless uh, have a podcast. And of course, as soon as I said their two names, the name of their podcast went right out of my brain. Uh, Ron Baker and who? Ron Baker and Ed Kless. Uh, goodness gracious. And it's one of my favorite podcasts, too. It's because you're on the spot. We're yes. Gonna, <laughs> we're going to come back to that in a this moment. This is what you do when you do it. Get me into the lightning round. I know. <laughs> Oh, The Soul of Enterprise is the name of their podcast. It's fantastic. Oh, cool. It's uh, It really is helpful for advisory type folks uh, in helping understand how to manage your your business. Yes, I, I love that. Just found that on online podcast. Really good stuff. They're, they were uh, very instrumental in helping me, and I'm glad that I learned about their stuff early on because it stopped us from thinking that we should go down the path of doing hourly billing. And we moved away from that. We, we never, we've never billed by the hour. So thank you for sharing. And last on lightning round, uh, a thought leader that, that might be working a shout out to someone that inspired you. You kind of already did that with the podcast. Um, but this might be also someone that could be a potential guest on growth amplifiers or just somebody that you, you think are like, this person's doing great. Just a shout out to them. Um, the per first person that came to mind besides like Ron Baker, who's been one of my biggest uh, thought leader guys that I've followed for a long time, uh, probably Hector Garcia as well. I think a lot of what Hector does in the accounting space makes sense. And one of the things he does really well is this type of thing, right? Like he's very good at creating video content and getting it out in front of a lot of people, which then I think generates a lot of good leads uh, for his business. So he does a great job of that. Awesome. <clears throat> Well, the, the last thought that we typically have on Growth Amplifiers, you've, you've shared some wonderful insights, and I really appreciate you taking the time to share with the audience. Uh, the other thing we, we typically end on is just something that would be like a parting gift, something that you've gained on your journey that might be helpful for others on theirs. It can be accounting related. It doesn't have to be related to any of that. It could be whatever you'd like to share. Um, I would say one thing we kind of just like, again, building off something we said earlier, don't stop mm -hmm. growing. Just have that continual growth mindset. Go find other folks who can be your mentors, your leaders, uh, places you can learn. Always be learning. I love it. So if you're tuning in and you'd like to woo, like to learn more about Tanya and her business, uh, check out, check them out. Um, go to the profitconstructors.com. They've got a great blog and on the blog, they have a post online resource menu. It's pretty cool. But there's a lot of other great blogs in there, diverse backgrounds, but a lot of it can be geared towards construction companies, but not all of it has to be for construction companies. So even if you just want to check it out, see what she's up to, uh, go there, check it out. It doesn't matter what you know, it matters what you do. More importantly, the actions that you take. So thanks for tuning in to Growth Amplifiers. We appreciate any shares, likes, 
And until the next time, keep on amplifying. Thanks, Kimmy. Thank you. To show your support, take a moment to amplify this message by sharing it online. To connect with me or gain more business growth insights, visit www.growthamplifiers.com. Thank you for your support.